Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. Fans of the channel know that I typically use a product for a really long time before I make a video about it. I want to make sure that the manufacturer's claims are being met. I want to better understand the product so I know what I need to tell my viewers. But I do make the occasional exception as I'm going to be making in this video for the new Vortex Razor AMG UH-1 holographic gun sight. That is a mouthful, which is why Vortex just calls this the Huey. So I'm going to call it the Huey from now on in the rest of the video. The Huey has been promoted to the market since maybe December of last year. It's been in development for a lot longer than that, and it got a lot of press at SHOT Show. Many people have backordered these, and I got on a list at Optics Planet to get a media unit. I, I got on that list months and months ago. I finally got my media unit uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of this past week. And in posting pictures and a short little video to Facebook and Instagram, I realized that there are a lot of questions out there that have already been answered by Vortex, but not in one place. The answers aren't in one easy to find place. There are also a lot of questions with answers that I can give you simply because I have one of these in my hands. I'm not gonna be able to tell you how durable this is. I'm not gonna be able to tell you how reliable this is. I'm not gonna be able to tell you how good this is to use on a shotgun or a pistol caliber carbine or something like that because I haven't used this on those things yet. Those are all answers that will be coming out soon enough as these trickle out on the market. But what I do think I can do is give some useful information to some of you who have a back order still active and you're wondering whether or not you want to keep it, or those of you who are wondering if you want to order one now because you like to be an early adapter or things like this. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The most common questions asked about the Huey have to do with its size. Is it as big and heavy as it looks? Compared to micro red dots from Trijicon and Aimpoint, it does look quite large, but compared to something like the Trijicon RCO, it's not that large at all. It does weigh about double the weights of the micro red dots as well, coming just under the weight of the four power RCO. However, the Huey has a much larger sight window than any of them, with a very thin hood and no dials or knobs whatsoever to obstruct your view of the target. The Huey is built with an integrated Picatinny QD mount complete with a lever locking system that's much easier to unlock than any other system I've tried. Tension adjustment is toolless in a practical sense since a thumbnail is all that's needed to rotate the tension nut with the latch open. This means that you can quickly and easily adjust the mount tension to your rail with the sight in place, which makes fine tuning way easier than other QD mounting systems. The mount height is lower one third co witness, and since the mount is truly an integral part of the sight body, you won't be changing that with an aftermarket market solution. The battery cap is captured so you don't have to worry about dropping and losing it and all the edges are generously radius to reduce snagging. Battery life with the standard CR123A is approximately 1500 hours which is two months at a moderate brightness setting. You can also run an LFP battery and charge it right in the optic with the waterproof micro USB port. It has a rubber dust and impact cover but that's all it does. It doesn't have to be in place for the site to be watertight down to at least 33 feet but probably more. This is actually pretty standard tech for waterproof electronics, so this shouldn't be much of a concern. The port also has a safety circuit to prevent you from trying to recharge a standard CR1238 and burning your house down. You'll get about 600 hours out of a fully charged LFP, which is three and a half weeks. The Huey doesn't have motion detection, so you must manually activate the reticle by pushing either of the brightness buttons. Pressing both at the same time turns it off. The 1.5 MOA center dot is brighter than the rest of the reticle, the lower triangle is for shooting within 10 yards as it compensates for the effects of your overbore on a standard AR-15 rail height. Like with other holographic sights, the reticle is a bit grainy and not solid, but this is because it's painted with a laser and not an LED shining through a filter. In other words, when you focus on the reticle, you see that it's made up of a bunch of little red dots. They aren't pixels technically, but pixelated is otherwise a good description of it. You do get ghost reticles if you crank the brightness well above anything reasonable for the 
the ambient light. They are very faint in comparison though, and I could see no reasonable way you'd confuse the ghost reticles for the actual reticle. If you have astigmatism like me, you should see if you can look through one of these before buying it, as some astigmatics don't like what they see, while others really like what they see. I get a comet effect from my aim points, but it never bothered me since I just zero with the center of the comet, so to speak. With the Huey, it's not really a comet effect. Instead, the edges of the reticle look a bit thorny, but the overall shape is easy to distinguish, including the position of the central aiming dot and the lower triangle. That said, the lower triangle appears a little rounded to me, but since it's clearly larger than the central aiming dot, I don't see that being a problem either. Everyone's astigmatism is different, so you will see something different than what I see. But as a qualitative comparison between what I see on an aim point and what I see with the Huey, the Huey could definitely be considered a more well-defined reticle. Vortex designed a Huey to greatly reduce any forward trace from the reticle. Many holographic sites have reticles that can be easily seen from either side of the optic, leading famously to pictures of shooters with their sights on backwards. From my observations, I've been unable to see the reticle from the front in a conventional sense. However, light coming in from a certain angle will indeed reflect out of the front of the sight. This ruby glow is not very bright here, but if you watch the same location on the Huey in my wrap up at the end of the video, you'll see that it can indeed be quite stark and clearly not a natural source of light. That said, I want to remind you that both the Aimpoint Red Dots and the Trijicon MRO have highly reflective ruby colored front lenses that are always visible to anyone in front of your gun. So the Huey isn't exactly unique with this. What I was surprised to find completely by accident was that the lower triangle of the reticle can indeed project itself very brightly at an extreme angle from the sight axis. Though it could also get a visible reflection from both the MRO and the T2, neither were nearly as bright or defined as a triangle projected from the Huey. I have no idea if this is significant enough to be an issue for most shooters, especially shooters who already run sights with highly reflective front lenses and no kill flash. However, I thought it was important to show what Vortex might mean when they say they nearly eliminated all signs of forward trace. A few other random facts that don't really line up with the part include the fact that Vortex did extensive testing on thermal drift, and they found that nearly every red dot they tested had measurable thermal drift, but some were way worse than others. They claim that the Huey's thermal drift is in the same territory as the aim points they tested, but obviously this has to be independently verified. I think that Vortex realizes this is going to be tested though, so I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're being honest with their self-assessment. Interestingly enough, the holographic film for the reticle is made in the UK, though the rest of the site is made in the US. The front and rear polycarbonate windows are to waterproof the internals and nothing more. You can bust out both and the sight will still work. Sealing up the electronics this way is why the hood can be so relatively thin and also why the hood extends the full length of the Huey. So that's why it looks like a brick like a Glock and not a boot like an EOTech. Lastly, the Huey is indeed covered by Vortex's legendary no questions asked warranty. If you break it, they will replace it and pretty fast at that. I want to wrap up by talking about something that I notice when I use a holographic gun sight. It doesn't have to do with Vortex in particular. This is every holographic gun sight I've ever used. I use lots of different red dot sights from Vortex, from Trijicon, from Aimpoint, Bushnell. And to me, I throw up any manufacturer's red dot sight and I look through it and it feels the same to me. There are differences in the quality of the glass that I'm looking through, the color of the glass maybe, there are differences in the brightness ability of the red dot, but it's all a familiar feel to me. When I switch to a holographic gun sight, there is a significant qualitative difference in, I don't know how to put it, I've struggled with coming up with words, but I feel, that's all I can say, is that there's something distracting to me going from using red dots as thoroughly as I do to using a holographic gun sight. This is not uh, just this one. This is lots of EOTechs. And that's in the past kept me from actually going out and getting an EOTech. So I don't know if that's because of my slight astigmatism. I don't know if it's because of other th reasons. I do feel though that I'm getting used to this to the degree that if I use this a lot, it probably would go away. If you are a red dot gun sight user and you've never used a holographic gun sight, you might throw this on a gun and start using it and go, ah, there's something, there's something weird about it. There's something wonky. It's not because it's the vortex. That's the way all holographic gun sights are for me. 
and it's probably the same reason for you. But again, I think it's something that with it with use, I'm going to be able to get used to, and I look forward to putting the Razer AMG UH1 or the Huey to more use. If you want to learn more about this or to place your own order, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can see the links right here. Be sure to click over there to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and hope to see you next time.